welcome to this week's episode of The Good Ram Show with me, Chris Goodram. As per usual, a big thank you to everybody that watched uh, last week's episode of the show, liked, commented. Um, I know there's a number of comments that uh, I haven't had the opportunity to, uh, to, to, to reply to as yet, but obviously I will do so as soon as possible, hopefully later on this afternoon. Um, and um, yeah, so <laughs> Watford, uh, quite a controversial uh, subject, I guess, uh, certainly seems to um, elicit quite a number of comments. And I suppose the thing is, when you when you're pushing sort of boundaries of uh, in any field, you, you're going to sort of uh, I wouldn't say get necessarily lots of criticism, but you're going to spark debate. And, and at the end of the day, I think uh, uh, certainly in, in in the whiskey industry, uh, debate is a good thing. You know, it keeps you on your toes, keeps you sort of right. Like, up to date with with things so um i i like i said uh, when, when i did the episode of the show i'm a, a big fan of what uh, what's happening at watford and um yeah i, I obviously w wish the guys you know uh, all the success that hopefully comes their way anyway um enough about that we're, we're looking at today's episode of the show i thought it was about time to do something other than whiskey and as you know i like a good rum mm, yeah um so I thought, let's do a rum episode of the show. And um, specifically, we're looking at Foursquare. Now, um, I have done episodes of the show on rum, uh, several episodes uh, over the years, and incorporated um, Foursquare bottlings in those tastings. But I don't think I've ever done uh, an episode of the show wholly on the Foursquare distillery. And um, so, first of all, a big, big thank you to Helen at Mauricio Beverages and to Peter Holland at Foursquare uh, for the samples for today's episode of the show. And I've kind of collected them, uh, shall we say, over a period of time, like I do with, with, with a lot of samples. You know, I get, get the, the samples and think, yeah, okay, I'll stick them to one side and then <laughs> hopefully get enough together to do, you know, uh, uh, an interesting episode of the show. And, um, the, the the thing is that uh, with with a lot of sort of distillers and blenders and what have you, you you never hear from them. They tend to sort of I wouldn't say be secretive characters, but they tend to sort of uh, should we say like, shun the limelight. It's probably the the wrong terminology, but they don't tend to sort of like you know they tend to work behind the scenes almost to a certain extent and uh, you know you, you you never really hear from them uh, unlike Richard Seal of course who is uh, really well known does lots of uh, of tastings and talks I mean I've, I've been to one uh, a few years ago which was really intriguing and the, the guy is really in, a really interesting guy and innovative and is pushing the boundaries of you know what can be done with with rum and I've always said that rum has the capacity to be um, an incredibly complex spirit given the, 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 the differences in raw materials that can be used, the different still types um, and then you sort of throw in sort of different cast types as well and you've got a, you know a blank canvas that can be you know have an awful lot of different things created from it and certainly I think um, uh, innovation is, is a word that is regularly used when de you know, describing sort of Richard's work and uh, I, I'm really looking forward to this so uh, a, a bit of a little bit of history I mean I won't go into sort of too much because it's obviously the uh, the emphasis is on the tasting but uh, apparently the seal family can trace its roots on the island of, of Barbados back to the 1650s although I think it was uh, from the 1820s when they were actively uh, in the rum industry um, and uh, apparently from what information I discovered uh, the Barbados um, uh, excise law forbidded forbidded is that the right word um, or forbade I don't know. Um, uh, the the direct sale of spirit from the distillery to the general public so basically what the uh, the family did was they set up a distribution business uh, and, and called it RL seals and got around the, the whole legislation and um, see so innovation and sort of uh, that kind of thing is, is, is sort of inherent in the, in the company and uh, so after after that sort of in, you know in the early 1900s that the, the brands sort of continued to develop it also or the company also bought up other brands of of, uh, of rum as well including um dorley's uh which i do have all a set of samples of, of that range and uh, 
Um, I, funnily enough, I was thinking of doing that as an episode today, but I thought, no, no we'll leave that one for an, another day. Um, although uh, I think the, the Dawley's range is, uh, is, is very impressive in its own right, but I thought, yep, yeah, let's have a look at some, uh, let's get under the skin of, of Foursquare, so to speak. Um, so, uh, as far as I, I don't know if the, the family owned a distillery back then, because the first mention of actually owning the distillery was in 1995 when Sir David Seal uh, purchased a, a, a somewhat um, decrepit uh, sugar factory which in itself dated back to uh, I believe 1636 uh, obviously played lots of time and money into it and that became the four square distillery which is now um, a, a gleaming modern edifice and um, as a state-of-the-art bottling uh, plant. It also has a, uh, a, a three-column vacuum uh, still along with, with a pot still. So, you know, they've got the ability to play around with the, the two distillates. And I believe that uh, um, the distillery, or Richard, basically blends the two distillates together um, before going into cask and then is blended again post uh, sort of uh, assemblage I suppose for want of a better word and um, predominantly aged in uh, um, American oak which uh, uh, so I believe was sourced from an uh, unnamed but famous distillery in uh, Lynchburg so I think we know that distillery don't we um, and well known for the use of other types of casks including sort of Madeira um, a port and uh, other such things so um, like I said, innovation is, is something that seems to sort of run um, in the, the Seals family. And uh, like I said, I'm really, really looking forward to, to, uh, to, to this episode of the show because uh, it, it's, it's something I've wanted to do for a while. And now I've got the, the opportunity to have a real, real good look at, uh, uh, at uh, Four Squares bottling. So I um, don't think I'm going to waffle along too much more. We're just going to uh, take a look at what I'll be tasting today. <laughs> Um, with sort of lots of different ABVs, different ages, casks and all that kind of stuff, it's, as I often say, it's always difficult to know sort of a, what kind of order to do a tasting in. Um, so I just thought, well, I think the easiest thing to do is just to do sort of, in inverted commas, age statement, so youngest to sort of like oldest spirit. So we're going to kick off with the four square spiced. Uh, this is bottled at 37.5% and uh, I believe it's obviously a blend of pot and column still, like all the rums, uh, with the addition of spices, which I don't know what they are, and I believe vanilla as well. And uh, so that will be a, an interesting starting point. Then we're going to move on to the RL Seals 10-year-old. This is the sort of, I suppose, for want of a better word, the flagship bottling. Uh, and I, I just love the bottle. I think it's just, just such a unique bottling. It just looks great on the shelf, and, you know, um, it's... Uh, it's bloody good rum at the end of the day. I think I've just you know, given the game away on what I th think about that. But anyway, um, that's bottled at 46%. Uh, then we're going to move on to uh, the range that uh, they've called the Exceptional Cask Series. This was uh, release number 13 uh, in April of 2020. This was the 8-year-old, 12-year-old uh, cask strength bottling. So distilled in 2008 and, like I said, bottled in 2020. And... Um, bottled at the not inconsiderable strength of 60%. Uh, then we're going to move on to the, the latest cast strength release. This is number 15, uh, 17, sorry. Uh, it's uh, from, distilled in 2009, bottled in this year. Uh, again, 12 year old and um, only slightly less ABV at 60%. Ooh, that's going to be a good one. Uh, then we're going to move on to uh, the Exceptional Cask Series bottling number 15. This was called Redoubtable. Uh, it was a 14-year-old uh, and uh, bottled again at 61%, aged in a combination of uh, ex-Bourbon and ex-Madeira casks and was bottled, I believe, in September of last year. And the final bottling we'll be looking at is number 16. This is called Shibboleth. Uh, and it's a straightforward 16 year old aged in American oak um, this time bottled at 50% uh, it was um, uh, 
uh, released in uh, March of uh, this year. So uh, hopefully this will be a really, really interesting and intriguing tasting. So uh, let's kick off with the spice. Right, okay, now the biggest issue I have with spiced rums is, and I've often called them an absolute bloody abomination, is the fact that um, the rum is inconsequential. All it is is an alcoholic vehicle for just bucketfuls of spice. And, you know, fine, if that's your kind of thing, if Sailor Jerry and um, Kraken and all those kind of god-awful bottles are your kind of cup of tea, then, then fine. No problem with that at all. Um, but as you well know, I like some balance. So, you know, I don't discount every spiced rum I come across. But I want to taste some rum at the end of the day. That's the whole point of the thing, isn't it? You know, anyway, let's uh, let's see what uh, the spice gives us then, shall we? Right. Well, first off, I get some rum character. Um, it's feels like it has more more of the lighter pot still uh, more of the lighter column still uh, characteristics it's a sort of lighter dried rummy fruit there's some vanilla there's a, a sort of a herbally pepperiness um, it's slightly mentholated and a little bit more spicier than I actually remember it but you know I think overall the balance is pretty good and um, this is certainly the, the only spiced rum I have ever tasted that I would want to try and sell to anyone, it has to be said. Um, and, and the thing is, it's like I say, you know, um, if all you know is Kraken, Sailor Jerry's, Rumbullion and all those god-awful ones, um, try this one. It has the spice notes that you, that you can pick up on, and, but it has some rum character and then hopefully you know wean you off this abomination and and, and drink some proper rum you know um but anyway of all the bloody abominations this is actually not too bad an abomination so um <laughs> that's praise honestly um anyway let's uh let's see what the power gives us Again, kind of gets off with the light sort of column still dried fruits and the spice is coming pretty quickly. It's got that sort of, again, mentholated, herbally, um, vanilla. It's, I mean, it's okay. It's not sort of the sort of um, the rum that I would kind of, you know, go absolutely nuts over. But like I said, I think it's got some lovely balance to it. You can certainly taste some rum character. You can taste some spice character. So as far as I can see, it kind of ticks all the boxes as far as a, a spiced rum is concerned. So um, nice one to start off with. Um, but let's let's move on to the, the real McCoy, as they say. Right, OK. Um, so... Like I said, let's let's move on to the real McCoy, but not the real McCoy, as in the bottling, the real McCoy. Um, yeah. Anyway, this is the RL Seals 10-year-old. Let's uh, see what the nose gives us on this end, shall we? Now, that is a lovely nose. Um, herbally dried fruits. Um, sultana, dried apricot, touch of citrus. There's a, a lovely honeyed note there, which kind of almost reminds me of a... Um, a sort of a late harvested Saturn's cask finish, although as far as I'm aware it's wholly 100% um, American oak matured. There's a touch of toasty oak, a little bit of cane sugar and the balance between the pot and the column seal is absolutely gorgeous. Um, you get both of those characteristics, you can taste or, or smell in this case the, um, the lighter dried fruits and then the sort of the, the more richer, darker fruits sit kind of like below that and kind of like give it a kind of a, a, a pleasant weight. Um, that is just a, that's just a gorgeous rum. That is stunning, absolutely stunning. And it's, yeah, it has a purity of character. There's no funkiness, there's no weirdness. Um, yeah, if you if you like that kind of thing, there are other distilleries, well-known distilleries that produce that style. But, but this is just, Purity of, of, of rum character. See what pals like. Right. 
delicate, elegant, lovely complexity, um, light dried apricot, bit of pineapple, touch of sultana, um, some lovely chewy sort of almost kind of um, multi notes on the mid palate. I mean, that's I'm guessing the sort of the sort of molasses sort of dark the, the pot still character coming through on the mid palate, which is giving it that lovely chewiness. Um, there's a touch of, of wood spice. Uh, the length is just gorgeous. It's really long and it's it's got a lovely progression. It kind of to me it kind of kicks off with more of again the lighter sort of column still notes with the pot still kind of coming through towards the towards the back end. Um, it's a almost kind of slight saltiness there as well, which is quite intriguing. And it's it's again just like I said, really gorgeously balanced. It's not a sort of a big bruising. Uh, rum, it's got lovely elegance, it's got complexity, um, and it's in a great bottle as well. So, yeah, brilliant stuff. Right, okay, so uh, let's move on to the first of the exceptional cask series. This is the uh, uh, 2008 12 year old. Let's see what the nose gives us on this end, shall we? Well, that's a pretty intense nose, it has to be said. Um, it's got a slight kind of whiny red fruit note to start off with. There's a touch of date, treacle, wood smoke, charred oak. Slightly bitter tannins, um, mentholated herbs, raisins, honey, dark honey, burnt sugar. I mean, this is a stunningly complex nose. Um, it's basically taken the elegance of the 10 year old and just amplified it completely uh, it is seriously seriously intense um, there's that lovely kind of almost that real sort of charred oak note uh, coming through quite strongly now when you when you leave it in the glass for a while but yeah it's got that lovely darkness to it and like I said it's got that sort of almost kind of whiny kind of fruit note um, that is just seriously intense. Let's see what the outside. Oh, that's dangerous. That does not taste like a 60% spirit. That alcohol is just so well contained. Quite weighty, quite juicy, lots and lots of pot still character, dark fruit, toasty oak, treacle, uh, molasses, wood spice. Mm, those spices just sort of right dancing on my tongue on the finish. I mean, the alcohol has really emphasised those spices. Um, I'm getting a little bit of, of lighter column still spirit right on the on on the aftertaste now. The sort of slightly lighter, almost tropical dried fruit, um, a little bit of tannin as well. Um, but the sort of like the, the, the weight of the sort of the molasses and the, uh, the 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 treacle really balance up that slight bitterness and um, that is stunning, absolutely stunning. Um, now, long gone are the days when I could get the uh, bottlings such as this and stick them on, on the shelves. Although, as you well know, uh, I'm not really allowed to speak about my, my employer. And of course, obviously, everything I say is my own comments and my own and has nothing to do with the, uh, the company I work for. But obviously, I can't sort of ignore the fact that that little fact. And like I said, you know, well, several years ago, I used to be able to get hold of these and put them on the shelf. Um, not hoping hell now as soon as as soon as they're released i have people kind of like you know um banging on the door for them to not metaphorically speaking anyway um mm, that's brought out the oak a little bit more um yeah really toasty charred getting some lighter column still notes coming through the a little bit of a floral note as well a little bit of honey a little bit more it's it's less dark. Um, I mean that is now reminding me more of the the ten year old, but again a sort of an amplified version of the ten year old. Um, again elegant, deep, stunning, stunning, absolutely stunning. 
ชื่อต่อสอนั้นซอฟต์เตอร์มอร์แมกฟิลิ่งจูซี่ทัชมอร์โอ๊กทัชมอร์วานิลล่าเอ่อลิลบิทมอร์โทสตี้เนสเลสส์สปิซี่เนสอะไรสุดดิ้นลิงดานเดอร์แอลกอฮอล์ส์ออฟเวอร์ซี่คันด์เดอร์จัสต์คันด์เดอร์รีดิวส์เดอร์สปิซี่ลิลบิททูเอ็ซอฟต์เดอร์สปิซี่เอ็ซอฟต์เดอร์สปิซี่เอ็ซอฟต์เดอร์สปิซี่เอ็ซอฟต์เดอร์สปิซี่เอ็ซอฟต์เดอร์สปิซี่เอ็ซอฟต์เดอร์สปิซี่เอ็ซอฟต์เดอร์สปิซี่เอ็ซอฟต์เดอร์สปิซี่เอ็ซอฟต์เดอร์สปิซี่เอ็ซอฟต์เดอร์สปิซี่เอ็ซอฟต์เดอร์สปิซี่เอ็ซอฟต์เดอร์สปิซี่เอ็ซอฟต์เดอร์สปิซี่เอ็ซอฟต์เดอร์สปิซี่เอ็ซอฟต์เดอร์สปิซี่เอ็ซอฟต์เดอร์สปิซี่เอ็ซอฟต์เดอร์สปิซี่เอ็ซอฟต์เดอร์สปิซี่เอ็ซอฟต์เดอร์สปิซี่เอ็ซอฟต์เดอร์สปิซี่เอ็ซอฟต์เดอร์สปิซี่เอ็ซอฟต์เดอร์สปิซี่เอ็ซอฟต์เดอร์สปิซี่เอ็ซอฟต์เดอร์สปิซี่เอ็ซอฟต์เดอร์สปิซี่เอ็ซอฟต์เดอร์สปิซี่เอ็ซอฟต์เดอร์สปิซี่เอ็ซอฟต์เดอร์สปิซี่เอ็ซอฟต์เดอร์สปิซี่เอ็ซอฟต์เดอร์สปิซี่เอ็ซอฟต์เดอร์สปิซี่เอ็ซอฟต์เดอร์สปิซี่เอ็ซอฟต์เดอร์สปิซี่เอ็ซอฟต์เดอร์สปิซี่เอ็ซอฟต์เดอร์สปิซี่เอ็ซอฟต์เดอร์สปิซี่เอ็ซอฟต์เดอร์สปิซี่เอ็ซอฟต์เดอร์สปิซี่เอ็ซอฟต์เดอร์สปิซี่เอ็ซอฟต์เดอร์สปิซี่เอ็ซอฟต์เดอร์สปิซี่เอ็ซอฟต์เดอร์สปิซี่เอ็ซอฟต์เดอร์สปิซี่เอ็ซอฟต์เดอร์สปิซี่เอ็ซอฟต์เดอร์สปิซี่เอ็ซอฟต์เดอร์สปิซี่เอ็ซอฟต์เดอร์สปิซี่เอ็ซอฟต์เดอร์สปิซี่เอ็ซอฟต์เดอร์สปิซี่เอ็ซอฟต์เดอร์สปิซี่เอ็ซอฟต์เดอร์สปิซี่เอ็ซอฟต์เดอร์สปิซี่เอ็ซอฟต์เดอร์สปิซี่เอ็ซอฟต์เดอร์สปิซี่เอ็ซอฟต์เดอร์สปิซี่เอ็ซอฟต์เดอร์สปิซี่เอ็ซอฟต์เดอร์สปิซี่เอ็ซอฟต์เดอร์สปิซี่เอ็ซอฟต์เดอร์สปิซี่เอ็ซอฟต์เดอร์สปิซี่เอ็ซอฟต์เดอร์สปิซี่เอ็ซอฟต์เดอร์สปิซี่เอ็ซอฟต์เดอร์สปิซี่เอ็ซอฟต์เดอร์สปิซี่เอ็ซอฟต์เดอร์สปิซี่เอ็ซอฟต์เดอร์สปิซี่เอ็ซอฟต์เดอร์สปิซี่เอ็ซอฟต์เดอร์สปิซี่เอ็ซอฟต์เดอร์สปิซี่เอ็ซอฟต์เดอร์สปิซี่เอ็ซอฟต์เดอร์สปิซี่เอ็ซอฟต์เดอร์สปิซี่เอ็ซอฟต์เดอร์สปิซี่เอ็ซอฟต์เดอร์สปิซี่เอ็ซอฟต์เดอร์สปิซี่เอ็ซอฟต์เดอร์สปิซี่เอ็ซอฟต์เดอร์สปิซี่เอ็ซอฟต์เดอร์สปิซี่เอ็ซอฟต์เดอร์สปิซี่เอ็ซอฟต์เดอร์สปิซี่เอ็ซอฟต์เดอร์สปิซี่เอ็ซอฟต์เดอร์สปิซี่เอ็ซอฟต์เดอร์สปิซี่เอ็ซอฟต์เดอร์สปิซี่เอ็ซอฟต์เดอร์สปิซี่เอ็ซอฟต์เดอร์สปิซี่เอ็ซอฟต์เดอร์สปิซี่เอ็ซอฟต์เดอร์สปิซี่เอ็ซอฟต์เดอร์สปิซี่เอ็ซอฟต์เดอร์สปิซี่เอ็ซอฟต์เดอร์สปิซี่เอ็ซอฟต์เดอร์สปิซี่เอ็ซอฟต์เดอร์สปิซี่เอ็ซอฟต์เดอร์สปิซี่เอ็ซอฟต์เดอร์สปิซี่เอ็ซอฟต์เดอร์สปิซี่เอ็ซอฟต์เดอร์สปิซี่เอ็ซอฟต์เดอร์สปิซี่เอ็ซอฟต์เดอร์สปิซี่เอ็ซอฟต์เดอร์สปิซี่เอ็ซอฟต์เดอร์สปิซี่เอ็ซอฟต์เดอร์สปิซี่เอ็ซอฟต์เดอร์สปิซี่เอ็ซอฟต์เดอร์สปิซี่เอ็ซอฟต์เดอร์สปิซี่เอ็ซอฟต์เดอร์สปิซี่เอ็ซอฟต์เดอร์สปิซี่เอ็ซอฟต์เดอร์สปิซี่เอ็ซอฟต์เดอร์สปิซี่เอ็ซอฟต์เดอร์สปิซี่เอ็ซอฟต์เดอร์สปิซี่เอ็ซอฟต์เดอร์สปิซี่เอ็ซอฟต์เดอร์สปิซี่เอ็ซอฟต์เดอร์สปิซี่เอ็ซอฟต์เดอร์สปิซี่เอ็ซอฟต์เดอร์สปิซี่เอ็ซอฟต์เดอร์สปิซี่เอ็ซอฟต์เดอร์สปิซี่เอ็ซอฟต์เดอร์สปิซี่เอ็ซอฟต์เดอร์สปิซี่เอ็ซอฟต์เดอร์สปิซี่เอ็ซอฟต์เดอร์สปิซี่เอ็ซอฟต์เดอร์สปิซี่เอ็ซอฟต์เดอร์สปิซี่เอ็ซอฟต์เดอร์สปิซี่เอ็ซอฟต์เดอร์สปิซี่เอ็ซอฟต์เดอร์สปิซี่เอ็ซอฟต์เดอร์สปิซี่เอ็ซอฟต์เดอร์สปิซี่เอ็ซอฟต์เดอร์สปิซี่เอ็ซอฟต์เดอร์สปิซี่เอ็ซอฟต์เดอร์สปิซี่เอ็ซอฟต์เดอร์สปิซี่เอ็ซอฟต์เดอร์สปิซี่เอ็ซอฟต์เดอร์สปิซี่เอ็ซอฟต์เดอร์สปิซี่เอ็ซอฟต์เดอร์สปิซี่เอ็ซอฟต์เดอร์สปิซี่เอ็ซอฟต์เดอร์สปิซี่เอ็ซอฟต์เดอร์สปิซี่เอ็ซอฟต์เดอร์สปิซี่เอ็ซอฟต์เดอร์สปิซี่เอ็ซอฟต์เดอร์สปิซี่เอ็ซอฟต์เดอร์สปิซี่เอ็ซอฟต์เดอร์สปิซี่เอ็ซอฟต์เดอร์สปิซี่เอ็ซอฟต์เดอร์สปิซี่เอ็ซอฟต์เดอร์สปิซี่เอ็ซอฟต์เดอร์สปิซี่เอ็ซอฟต์เดอร์สปิซี่เอ็ซอฟต์เดอร์สปิซี่เอ็ซอฟต์เดอร์สปิซี่เอ็ซอฟต์เดอร์สปิซี่เอ็ซอฟต์เดอร์สปิซี่เอ็ซอฟต์เดอร์สปิซี่เอ็ซอฟต์เดอร์สปิซี่เอ็ซอฟต์เดอร์สปิซี่เอ็ซอฟต์เดอร์สปิซี่เอ็ซอฟต์เดอร์สปิซี่เอ็ซอฟต์เดอร์สปิซี่เอ็ซอฟต์เดอร์สปิซี่เอ็ซอฟต์เดอร์สปิซี่เอ็ซอฟต์เดอร์สปิซี่เอ็ซอฟต์เดอร์สปิซี่เอ็ซอฟต์เดอร์สปิซี่เอ็ซอฟต์เดอร์สปิซี่เอ็ซอฟต์เดอร์สปิซี่เอ็ซอฟต์เดอร์สปิซี่เอ็ซอฟต์เดอร์สปิซี่เอ็ซอฟต์เดอร์สปิซี่เอ็ซอฟต์เดอร์สปิซี่เอ็ซอฟต์เดอร์สปิซี่เอ็ซอฟต์เดอร์สปิซี่เอ็ซอฟต์เดอร์สปิซี่เอ็ซอฟต์เดอร์สปิซี่เอ็ซอฟต์เดอร์สปิซี่เอ็ซอฟต์เดอร์สปิซี่เอ็ซอฟต์เดอร์สปิซี่เอ็ซอฟต์เดอร์สปิซี่เอ็ซอฟต์เดอร์สปิซี่เอ็ซอฟต์เดอร์สปิซี่เอ็ซอฟต์เดอร์สปิซี่เอ็ซอฟต์เดอร์สปิซี่เอ็ซอฟต์เดอร์สปิซี่เอ็ซอฟต์เดอร์สปิซี่เอ็ซอฟต์เดอร์สปิซี่เอ็ซอฟต์เดอร์สปิซี่เอ็ซอฟต์เดอร์สปิซี่เอ็ซอฟต์เดอร์สปิซี่เอ็ซอฟต์เดอร์สปิซี่เอ็ซอฟต์เดอร์สปิซี่เอ็ซอฟต์เดอร์สปิซี่เอ็ซอฟต์เดอร์สปิซี่เอ็ซอฟต์เดอร์สปิซี่เอ็ซอฟต์เดอร์สปิซี่เอ็ซอฟต์เดอร์สปิซี่เอ็ซอฟต์เดอร์สปิซี่เอ็ซอฟต์เดอร์สปิซี่เอ็ซอฟต์เดอร์สปิซี่เอ็ซอฟต์เดอร์สปิซี่เอ็ซอฟต์เดอร์สปิซี่เอ็ซอฟต์เดอร์สปิซี่เอ็ซอฟต์เดอร์สปิซี่เอ็ซอฟต์เดอร์สปิซี่เอ็ซอฟต์เดอร์สปิซี่เอ็ซอฟต์เดอร์สปิซี่เอ็ซอฟต์เดอร์สปิซี่เอ็ซอฟต์เดอร์สปิซี่เอ็ซอฟต์เดอร์สปิซี่เอ็ซอฟต์เดอร์สปิซี่เอ็ซอฟต์เดอร์สปิซี่เอ็ซอฟต์เดอร์สปิซี่เอ็ซอฟต์เดอร์สปิซี่เอ็ซอฟต์เดอร์สปิซี่เอ็ซอฟต์เดอร์สปิซี่เอ็ซอฟต์เดอร์สปิซี่เอ็ซอฟต์เดอร์สปิซี่เอ็ซอฟต์เดอร์สปิซี่เอ็ซอฟต์เดอร์สปิซี่เอ็ซอฟต์เดอร์สปิซี่เอ็ซอฟต์เดอร์สปิซี่เอ็ซอฟต์เดอร์สปิซี่เอ็ซอฟต์เดอร์สปิซี่เอ็ซอฟต์เดอร์สปิซี่เอ็ซอฟต์เดอร์สปิซี่เอ็ซอฟต์เดอร์สปิซี่เอ็ซอฟต์เดอร์สปิซี่เอ็ซอฟต์เดอร์สปิซี่เอ็ซอฟต์เดอร์สปิซี่เอ็ซอฟต์เดอร์สปิซี่เอ็ซอฟต์เดอร์สปิซี่เอ็ซอฟต์เดอร์สปิซี่เอ็ซอฟต์เดอร์สปิซี่เอ็ซอฟต์เดอร์สปิซี่เอ็ซอฟต์เดอร์สปิซี่เอ็ซอฟต์เดอร์สปิซี่เอ็ซอฟต์เดอร์สปิซี่เอ็ซอฟต์เดอร์สปิซี่เอ็ซอฟต์เดอร์สปิซี่เอ็ซอฟต์เดอร์สปิซี่เอ็ซอฟต์เดอร์สปิซี่เอ็ซอฟต์เดอร์สปิซี่เอ็ซอฟต์เดอร์สปิซี่เอ็ซอฟต์เดอร์สปิซี่เอ็ซอฟต์เดอร์สปิซี่เอ็ซอฟต์เดอร์สปิซี่เอ็ซอฟต์เดอร์สปิซี่เอ็ซอฟต์เดอร์สปิซี่เอ็ซอฟต์เดอร์สปิซี่เอ็ซอฟต์เดอร์สปิซี่เอ็ซอฟต์เดอร์สปิซี่เอ็ซอฟต์เดอร์สปิซี่เอ็ซอฟต์เดอร์สปิซี่เอ็ซอฟต์เดอร์สปิซี่เอ็ซอฟต์เดอร์สปิซี่เอ็ซอฟต์เดอร์สปิซี่เอ็ซอฟต์เดอร์สปิซี่เอ็ซอฟต์เดอร์สปิซี่เอ็ซอฟต์เดอร์สปิซี่เอ็ซอฟต์เดอร์สปิซี่เอ็ซอฟต์เดอร์สปิซี่เอ็ซอฟต์เดอร์สปิซี่เอ็ซอฟต์เดอร์สปิซี่เอ็ซอฟต์เดอร์สปิซี่เอ็ซอฟต์เดอร์สปิซี่เอ็ซอฟต์เดอร์สปิซี่เอ็
a sort of citric acidity possibly. Um, it's a little shorter than the 2008 but it's still got that lovely elegance to it. It's again lighter, again sort of harking back to the Seals 10 year old um, but still the intensity is dialed up that little bit further. Um, touch of pepper uh, on the finish now and, and, and the sort of toasty oak notes just kind of like you know, a subtler uh, and, and, and you know, really just coming through on the aftertaste. But again, I mean, that is a gorgeous rum. I mean, oh, what, what can you say? <laughs> Okay, so let's move on to the next bottling. This is the Redoubtable. It's 14 years old and it is 61%. Let's see what those gives us on this end, shall we? Now we're in, we're back in the sort of the darker fruit uh, territory. It's got an almost kind of almost black fruit note to kick off with. There's treacle, molasses, pot still weight, um, nutty oak. And then there's the Madeira. I get this biscuity, nutty, uh, slightly honeyed uh, note from the Madeira. Um, and again, it's really quite subtle. Um, and to me, you kind of like, um, I wouldn't say you have to go searching for the Madeira notes because I suppose if you know what you're looking for, they kind of do come through. Um, but it is, again, it's not just, it is rum first, cask second, if you see what I mean. Um, it's a little bit of a gritty tannic note, um, so we're kind of, again, sort of in the sort of like the uh, the, the, eight, the the 2009 cask strength bottling. Um, there's a little bit of charred chocolate. Um, I mean that's beautifully balanced again. Just again, lovely balance of of of, of cask and uh, and spirit. Um, oh, lovely. Let's see what the parts like. You notice that alcohol. It's emphasising the tannins, it's quite tight, it's gritty, um, drying. The, the, the finish is really masked, that alcohol has kind of like, you know, almost shut the whole thing off. Um, again, it's got that kind of biscuity Madeira note, it's got the, the darker dried fruits, the, the pot still weight, um, some lovely spices. It sweetens the aftertaste, you kind of give it a few, a few moments. Um, just to allow the kind of like the alcohol to sort of just dissipate off the tongue and you get a, a lovely kind of cane sugar sweetness uh, and a little bit of sweet vanilla and a little bit of toasty oak um, but my that is tight that is tight you notice that alcohol um, and that's definitely going to need a little drop of water so I'll be careful with that because um, there's not an awful lot left in the glass so uh, let's see what the nose gives us now It's emphasised the toastiness of, of the American oak. Um, the Madeira note is still noticeable, although it's 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 further down in the nose. Um, again, a little biscuitiness, um, more columns, uh, pot still notes, more more molasses, more weight, coffee, molasses. Overall, it's just kind of softened the nose up. Um, it's not so kind of um dark and again this is, seems to be um the the the, the way the, the spirit is going you put a little drop of water with it and we each time we're kind of moving back to the the seals 10 year old so in essence what i'm basically trying to say if you can't get your hands on any of the exceptional cast bottling just buy the seals 10 year old you know it's uh, you're not going to be missing out what well, you are going to be missing out i i but, you know, if you, like I say, if you can't get one, just buy what you can get, you know. Um, that's just gorgeous. Absolutely stunning. Let's see what the parts are. Hmm. 
getting more of the Madeira cast now, what now I've diluted it. Um, more of the biscuity, the grapey, whiny sort of biscuity kind of character. Um, and again, we're getting a, a, a little bit more emphasis on the lighter column still dried fruits rather than the, the weightier pot still. Um, and, and, and like I said, we're kind of, again, harking back to the 10-year-old. Um, although maybe with a little bit more intensity. Um, a touch of sweeter spice on the, on, on, on the, uh, the aftertaste. Again absolutely stunning. I mean, you know, mmm. Right, finally we're on to the, the shibboleth. So, uh, 16 years old, holy American oak. Let's see what the note gives on this end, shall we? Right, so the first thing you notice is there's an obvious maturity. It's got that lovely aged rum rancio, dark Toasty dried fruit again. Oxidized fruit. This is the first time I've picked up an oxidative tropical fruit note in any of the bottlings. And you know that they, they they go on this bollocks about sort of like, oh well, when it's matured in the Caribbean, it's basically a case of four times mature than a, a scotch of the same age. And it's bollocks, absolute bollocks. Um but this t this smells like a 16 year old rum. Um, it has that sort of slightly oxidative character and, and that slightly oxidative rancio. Um, there's a touch of orange peel, dark honey, even a little touch of rubber as well. Um, eucalyptus, menthol. Mm. I mean that is just that's mind blowingly good. I mean that is it's one of those spirits where you stick your nose in the glass and you get something new each time and it's just a testament to the quality of the spirit that is flowing off the uh, off the stills. And like I said, it is pristinely clean. You know, there's no funkiness, there's no dirtiness, there's no weirdness. You know, it is it's purity and and I guess part of the reason why I wanted to do this tasting after doing Waterford was because there are other distilleries that are looking at the the purity of the the raw materials um, yeah Waterford are not the only ones that are doing it or renegade rum as the case may be um, yes they're probably making a little bit more noise about these kind of things but you know um, this is the wonderful thing about the, about rum is that there are different styles to suit different palates uh, and uh, like i said you know this just is you know, just has the purity of, of of molasses character with a bit of sort of uh, stick pot still and corn still thrown in for good measure um yeah just 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 stunning so it pass on Wow, wow, mmm, that's got a real mentholated note on the finish, it's almost kind of sinus clearing, it's kind of, I can feel it going up the back of my nose, um, it's just, it's like the, the, the Seals 10 year old, but with just more maturity, again we're getting that oxidised, um, lighter dried fruit, uh, sort of column still dried fruit, but again underpinned by the weight of the, of the pot still, um, quite spicy, uh, on the mid palate, a little bit of tannin. Um, the oak is not quite so toasty. Uh, I, I've noticed um, it's 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 a little bit more wood smoke. Um, it's not quite so sort of well, youthful. I know that's a bit of a stupid thing to say because it's a sixteen-year-old. Um, but what I have noticed in the other bottlings is that the oak does tend to be really quite toasty, and it comes through quite sort of. Uh, quite noticeably, whereas on this particular bottling, we are really in the 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 the, the era oh, the era era. No, um, we're in the we're in the, the older rum kind of statement. Basically, what I think has happened is that the oak has kind of really leached out all its toastiness and oakiness, and the extended sort of maturation period has kind of allowed the sort of the oxidative. Uh, character of um, aging to just become a little bit more sort of like front and center 
uh, if you like. Um, but oh, I mean, if you you manage to get hold of a bottle of that, well, <laughs> good for you because that is absolutely gorgeous. Right, okay, so let's sum today's episode of the show uh, up. So, um, <laughs> well, stunning, absolutely stunning. I mean, you know, um, I don't use the, that that word lightly. Well, I do use it quite a lot. Well, no, I don't. Yeah, it, no, just, just bloody good. Um, big thank you to um, Marissa Beverages and to the Foursquare Distillery for the samples for today's episode of the show. I mean, you know, uh, just stunning. I mean, you know... Uh, <laughs> Lots, yeah, lots of words. Anyway, um, yeah, no, I'm not actually. Um, so the spice, like I said, it's probably the only spice rum I've ever tasted that I would want to try and sell you. I mean, it, it it's balanced. It's still a spice rum. It's still a bit of an abomination, but it's not as bad an abomination as some. Okay, so that, like I said, that's praise. Um, <laughs> we move on to the seals, ten-year-old, which is a stunning, uh, stunning. Uh, 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 right. Okay, so let's sum today's episode of the show up. Um, first of all, a big thank you to both Marusi Beverages and. Um, uh, the fourth grade distillery for the samples for today's episode of the show. Uh, I very much appreciate it, and uh, yeah, I hope you've enjoyed this uh, this this slightly more sort of new episode of the show. Um, anyway, um, so summing up, um, the, the spiced. Okay, uh, like I said, I think of uh, of all the abominations that are called spiced rum, that is the only one that I would actually try and sell you if you really wanted the spiced rum i would actually try and veer you away from that but you know if, if, if you must have a spiced rum then that's really the only one that's worth worth bothering about in my personal opinion um the seals 10 year old flagship bottling classic it just sets out what the distillery is trying to tell you um and as as i said from you know all the other bottlings, once once you sort of like put a little drop of water with them, they all kind of hark back to this the seals ten year old, which understandable. It's that is the classic distillery character there in a bottle, so to speak. Uh, Two thousand eight. I mean, that was um, yeah. I mean, it's stunning. I mean, you know, dangerous, really dangerous. That did not taste like it was a sixty percent spirit. And I'm probably going to have to go and lay down after doing this. <laughs> doing this tasting well maybe i'll have lunch first now i'll lay down um i mean yeah absolutely gorgeous the 2009 which is really interesting to see the difference between the two a little tighter a little bit more tannic a little bit more sort of oak um but again put a little drop of water with it it opens up absolutely gorgeously and um yeah i i, I still think the 2008 was just oh um the uh, the redoubtable yeah really interesting lovely to see uh, a, a bit of uh, other cast character coming in I mean yes I know there have been port casts and, and other bottlings uh, that, that I've re reviewed um, but it didn't stand out if you see what I mean it was subtly done it was lovely uh, to, to, to pick up on that sort of slightly sort of biscuity um, honeyed Madeira note and it complemented the the, uh, the spirit absolutely gorgeously uh, and the shibboleth which was just just divine absolutely stunning I mean lovely maturity lovely sort of oxidized character not quite so much oak as some of the other bottlings um, because the oak has obviously you know done its thing and you know now we're into the sort of like more about the sort of the um, the way that the the spirit has kind of uh, interacted with the the, the atmosphere um, and that was kind of like the focal the focus point of that particular bottling um, and absolutely stunning so so yeah um i blown away absolutely blown away i mean you know i i, I love what what richard seal is doing at four square uh, but it's been I, i've never tasted all of these in kind of like one fell swoop and it is just like i said you know if you can't get a hold of one of the exceptional cast series bottlings just by the seals 10 year old it is bloody good at the end of the day anyway um hope you enjoyed this week's episode of the show <laughs> i sure as hell enjoyed it if you didn't anyway um so uh here's to next week and uh, good ramming and good afternoon <laughs>